Hi, my name is Thais Gibson and I'm the creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video. And in this video, I wanna talk about some strange texting habits that dismissive avoidance often have in relationships. And we're gonna cover four main texting patterns in general. Texting habit number one. I'm not going to just tell you the texting habit, though. I'm going to tell you the texting habit and like what's actually going on for the dismissal avoidant attachments. Also, it brings some clarity to the very confusing ways that DAs often communicate. So, texting habit number one is indirect text messages. And this is generally like an indirect initiation of trying to get together, hang out. So, let me give you an example. I had a client once who was getting to know um, somebody that they were sort of seeing and dating and they had hung out like one or two times and they um, said that they reached out to this person and they both liked playing tennis and they said and this was like in session with me like in the client session that they were describing this to me and they said oh um, you know I'm working on being more vulnerable I initiated um, spending time with this person this week but she kind of responded in a way that didn't like decide she really wanted to hang out. So I decided, okay, well, then she's not interested. I'm not going to bother um, engaging further in this relationship. Like, I'm just going to cut it off. And I was like, oh, well, what was the text you sent? And this, this um, person who was my client said, I sent her this. <laughs> and it was a picture of tennis balls. And I was kind of surprised. Like, I was like, wait, so you, that was, what did you say anything else? Like, what else is going on? And and um, he said, oh no, but like, it's pretty obvious. Like I was sending the tennis balls, like to say like, let's play tennis. Do you want to play tennis? And um, the, the person responded back that he was texting with and said, oh, exciting or something along those lines. And I was explaining to this dismissive boy and client like, well, you don't know that she's not interested. That would be a really confusing text message to receive because I wouldn't know what you were trying to say. And he couldn't get over for like a, quite some time, like 10, 15 minutes of discussion that it was so obvious. Like, of course he was trying to ask her if she wanted to play tennis. And I was like, but she, when, like tonight, like at the time you sent the message or on the weekend, like what? And, and so we, it was sort of this endearing moment as he started to realize his own patterns of like being indirect. And so I asked him quite a bit about it. And I've had many, many conversations with DA clients over the years about these things. And it usually kind of resorts back down to the same kinds of themes, but I'll unpack this theme for you um, with this specific client who said, well, you know, I didn't want to be too vulnerable and ask too directly, I guess, because I didn't really want to feel rejected if she didn't want to. And I also wanted to play, but didn't want to play enough where I was going to just like ask directly. So it was me just sort of putting my feelers out there to sort of see. And then if she said she was ready to play, I wasn't already committed to a time and date and location. And so I had more flexibility in what I actually wanted to do. So that is generally why DAs under number one will send those indirect texts. They often follow that sort of train of thought. In many conversations I've had, it's the same sort of themes. I sort of want to reach out. I sort of don't know if I want to go out of my way and out of my comfort zone to go spend time with this person. So we'll just sort of like put a feeler out there and see if they're interested. And if they're not, that's okay. And also I don't have to feel vulnerable sending that text either, right? So that's pattern number one. Pattern number two last minute texts that are more direct to hang out, but when the person has already missed the boat. Okay. So an example of this would be, you have plans with Bob on Friday evening and you made them on your last date on Tuesday and Friday comes and you haven't heard from Bob throughout the week. And you think, okay, well, like, are we going to hang out or not hang out? And you're feeling anxious and distressed and nervous and kind of waiting. And then eventually you text Bob at three o'clock and you say, hey, are we still getting together this evening? What's the plan? And the plan was for a 7 p.m. movie or 7 p.m. dinner. And at 6.55, Bob says, hey, yeah, I'd love to still hang out tonight. Or at 7.45 or 8.45, Bob says, hey, yeah, are you still around? So these last minute texts to hang out and when I've unpacked many of these conversations, I won't tell you a full story for every single person because the, the video will take forever. But when I've unpacked these conversations, it is the person 
and DAs have told me this directly many, many, many times over, same theme, same pattern. DAs know that they missed the boat. They wanted to make other plans, um, like to do something else, like to hang out on their own or to hang out with friends. And they intentionally waited for the time to go by because they didn't want to commit to plan to that person. And then they knew it was too late. So they reached out because they were trying to avoid conflict or hurting the other person's feelings. Um, and I would say hurting the other person's feelings isn't like, oh, I'm feeling so sad for them and like so empathetic towards them necessarily. Although DAs can be very empathetic. It's just not very much expressed. Um, but it's more like, like, I didn't want to have to have a big fight. Like, I didn't want to have to have a big conflict or a big problem. I didn't really want them to have to react. So I said, oh, yeah, I'm still excited to hang out, but I knew it was too late. And if I'm really honest, I knew it was too late. And I just thought that that was kind of like, oh, I can put it out there then, not seem like I forgot, kind of keep the window open with this person or the door open with this person and not seem like I'm a huge jerk either. Um, and this generally is one of the big um, reasons and, and through conversations. And it doesn't mean that the dismissive avoidance, like super uninterested in the person, but it does mean that they're not interested enough to like make a true effort. Sometimes it is because like, they're just not in a really good space personally, like they're emotionally dysregulated or they're burned out. DAs burn out very easily. Um, they're almost kind of like in their own state of burnout emotionally a lot of the time because that emotional bandwidth is like so shrunken and they're also spending a lot of time generally in sympathetic nervous system mode on a very subtle level. Um, but it, it generally means like I find if you're on the receiving end of this, even if a DA like has good intentions, they're, they're just not really sure where they stand. Um, it's really important if you're on the receiving end of that to go by like behaviors. Like when you're dating somebody, I mean, we have lots of videos about this on this channel, but to go by the person's behaviors, not what they say they want to do, but do people show up or not? And that's a big theme that we should all be vetting for during the dating process. Um, number three, indirect canceling on plans. <laughs> Sorry, I've had so many conversations over the years and, and I don't mean to laugh, but I just, I find that like, there's this endearing element of DAs, although it can be honestly really quite painful to, to be on the receiving end of for people. Um, but it's like, it's like a, like a little kid sometimes, you know, like they, they don't want to rock the boat. They don't want to have problems. So indirect cancellation. So, um, what would be an example of this? Let's say that, um, you have plans with Bob and, um, you are supposed to, let's say the same theme, 7 PM dinner with Bob, haven't really chatted with Bob so much recently. And then you text Bob, hey, are we still gonna hang out this evening? And Bob says, hey, I'm tired, right? <laughs> and there's this like ambiguity and, and you're like, what does that mean? You're tired, so you wanna stay in instead of go out for dinner? You want to um, um, you know, go to a movie and not talk? You wanna watch a movie and just be quiet? Or are you canceling? Like, you know, <laughs> and so it can be a little frustrating to be on the receiving end of some of these messages. Um, but what's interesting, I think one of the most interesting things is often DAs, when they're in that boat, they think that they're being direct. And you have to remember too, right? As much as it can be frustrating to be on the receiving end of texts like this, and it can be confusing. And um, it's almost like out of a comedy scene where somebody's like so confused and frustrated or, you know, these different things, because um, it's so indirect and you're like, come on. Um, but at the end of the day, like number one, it's painful to be on the end of that. And same thing, go by somebody's behaviors. Like if somebody's not showing up, don't have to continue to date them. And number two, it doesn't mean be cruel to the person in that boat. It means have compassion because generally this is how DAs were communicated to their entire lives as children. Like this is the type of modeling they had was like indirect communication from parents or caregivers, um, no emotions, like having to sort of decipher actions and read between the lines about what's going on all the time. And so that's how they've been modeled communication, right? It's not like they're trying to be harsh or cruel. It's like they usually just don't have any better modeling. Um, but obviously you can see where like friction will ensue. And then number four is ghosting patterns of communication. By the way, I have a whole conflict communication course for how to address these things in a very eloquent way. We've got actually two you can check out, one that has like steps for communication when you're trying to learn communication, and one that has a whole bunch of scripts for communication, how to address these types of behaviors and issues. We have 60 scripts you can model off of, um, and you can check those out for free for seven days. I'm going to still tell you more about the ghosting patterns and what this is all about, but um, you can check them out for free for seven days using that link below. There's also an attachment cell quiz link down there if you ever want to take a free attachment cell quiz and see what percent security 
sure you're at. Um, but anyways, so the ghosting patterns, um, DAs ghost when they don't know how to respond, don't have enough interest to follow through appropriately compared to how much guilt or how many fears they're experiencing. So if a DA is in a position where they are like, you know, they're interested in somebody, but they're in like their feelings minus their fears. They're afraid of committing. They don't want to take things too seriously. They can ghost for like two or three days at a time on text. Another reason this happens is that DAs are trying to slow how fast the relationship is moving. Sometimes they'll be really interested in somebody in a relationship, but then if that person jumps right in head first and is like, let's be together, or is at least like conversating about that and the DA is not ready, that's their way of slowing the pace of a relationship sometimes. It's like they're trying to like drag it backwards a little bit by taking space between communication and not talking as much. And often in cases too, like, so we can have a DA that's not really that interested. So there's no momentum, right? So they kind of ghost for a few days at a time, or at least their fears, their feelings minus their fears are not, the feelings aren't outweighing their fears by a lot. So it's one version, but that other trajectory is that sometimes DAs are really interested, but they're not interested in the pace that somebody's moving at. So that's our way of sort of like um, indirectly trying to slow things down, though a very counterproductive one as a general rule. So, um, you know, they're usually that just creates more conflict long term and more of what they're afraid of in the first place. Um, so it can also happen. The very last reason it can happen is if a DA is having a vulnerability hangover, they opened up too much too quickly, then they feel kind of ashamed. They can kind of go circle offline for a few days at a time in that case as well. Um, and I mean, ghosting patterns. So like periods of time where they ghost, but they come back, not like somebody actually ghosting. Obviously that can be a, a text message pattern as well, but that's because they're trying to end the relationship at that point. Um, so I hope this makes sense. I thought this was a fun video to put together. Um, let me know questions you have in the comments below. Check out those communication courses for free for seven days. If you want to learn how to address these things, if you're on the receiving end of them or how to appropriately tell somebody that you're not interested or that you have to cancel plans and you just need some support and modeling in that scripts, the communication scripts course in there as well. Um, so thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.